Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Hakuna La Planta. My name is Kevin, and today is a plant tour video. Super exciting! I haven't filmed a plant tour video in quite a while. Um, I know I did a lot of them in the winter time, but yeah, I feel kind of weird because it's not really like a structured video, but yeah, there's a lot to do. I'm gonna look at my uh, philodendron strawberry shake propagations first. I need to trellis some Hoyas as well. So yeah, there's a lot, I don't know. So yeah, let's start off with the, uh, <laughs> let's start off with the philodendron strawberry shakes. These strawberry shake propagations are here. Um, there is a single LED grow light. These are the Sun Blaster LED strip grow lights. I will put a link in the description below. Usually with propagations, I would probably have a second one or just this tray a little closer, but just space-wise, I don't have another place to put them. And I just have my light meter here. I'm just going to show you what kind of lighting it gets. So if we go lower in the tray, we're about 1,200 foot candle. Some of the leaves higher up will get about 2,500 that are directly below. The general rule I have when it comes to propagating single node cuttings, the medium needs to be moist or wet at all times just to initiate root growth and you need to give it a ton of light. If you don't have a ton of light, the cutting will most likely rot. And on the flip side, talking about the medium, if the medium dries out too much and there's no root and they just have the existing aerial roots, the cutting will never root and it'll just dry up. So uh, I'm just gonna take the whole tray here um yeah there's there's some growth here and here or there oh i almost dropped everything oh my god one just fell on me oh okay oh oh my god it's a mess already oh my god i'm trying not to move okay i'm just gonna have to get all this let's walk with the tray y'all let's just do this thing okay we are here we are here also it's a beautiful day in toronto look at that blue skies and because we're in Toronto construction condos everywhere <laughs> also look guys one of the Beatles albums fell down it was the first album oh my god I saw her standing there was on this album <laughs> I'm a fake fan everyone <laughs> it's this one the frame just completely just broke look at this oh my god there's look at this strawberry this is the one that fell on me. I love how I was going on about how you need to keep these so moist and this is like dust. That is dust. There are some more mature ones in here. You could see this one's a little bit bigger. Um, again, I find that if a strawberry shake has more green, the leaves grow bigger, which makes sense because the plant could make more food for it itself. There is a new leaf coming. We'll just run some water over it just so it could help the leaf come out. And because it's summer, I'm just I'm just putting the cuttings in the sink. And because it's summer, these, you know, cuttings are starting to grow a larger root system. They're a lot more thirsty. So I'm actually very shocked to see like this is dry. I, I watered these like three days ago. <laughs> oh wow, oh my God. I'm gonna show you a few cause I'm obsessed. They initially started off with just one leaf and now they're pushing out like new ones. Oh my gosh, hi. There's another one over here. She's pushing out a new little baby. Alrighty, so we're just gonna run the faucet over these cuttings or propagations. And I just kind of go in a circle like this. Because when they're this dry, guys, you do need to go over them a few times just because with these pots specifically, they do have these, they're orchid pots, I guess, but they do have like these slits. When they dry out too much, they come out of here first, the water, and then the bottom part is not saturated enough. I've honestly had mixed, you know, luck when it comes to propagations with any, you know, variegated a plant. You never truly know what the variegation is gonna look like once you propagate it and what the new leaf will look like. Like, for example, this leaf had pretty good variegation. The newest leaf has zero, it is fully green. So I kind of, you know, I kind of know why these uh, plants are on the pricier side because the propagation success rate and getting a good strawberry shake, it just varies. I mean, you're probably gonna have 
to have a really good specimen with a lot of really good variegation on the stem. The mediums that I'm using to propagate plants, it is less chunky than my usual aeroid mix. Once these plants grow enough roots, I usually transition them into a medium with more chunky components, more bark, charcoal, perlite pumice. So that's why, I don't know if y'all can see, but when I'm watering these plants, the water isn't going like through immediately. It's just kind of sitting a little bit at the top of the medium and then it's going through. If you're putting a cutting or, you know, a water propagated plant into soil, it does need to be wetter. Now that they have roots, I will and prefer to grow these plants in a more chunkier mix. And I almost forgot. So pop popper is basically a beneficial nematode that lives in the soil. They are used as a preventive for fungus gnats. Also for, um, I think it's like certain stages of thrips that live in the soil. I have had a fungus gnat infestation, you know, the past year. It's well controlled now, but I find that this works the best as a preventative. So even though I don't have an issue now, obviously watering your plant in soil will lead to a perfect environment for fungus gnats. So I think the last time I put these nematodes in was a month ago i think you're supposed to do it a few times to kind of eradicate the gnats in the soil basically i take this pouch here these single pouches they need to be kept moist you use one pouch for a five gallon pot obviously because these are smaller i'd basically cut it open like that just sprinkle a few into each Pot. This is not in the instructions, but I feel like it just makes sense. I'm I'm obviously not gonna put a, a pouch in a like two to three inch pot. I have heard that people have tons of success if they cut this open and put the contents in a watering can. Through time, the nematodes will, will release into the medium. And I'm forgetting which stage. I think it's the larva stage of the fungus gnat. Another thing that I do, um, I use this. I don't know how to say the name, guys, but this is a beneficial bug that lives in the soil. So along with the nematodes, I use these bugs every few months. I think I applied them to all my soil plants, I want to say like a month ago. These are soil dwelling mites and they will again eat I think the eggs of the fungus gnat. I am a firm believer when it comes to pests you have to use two different methods whether that's using two di two different beneficial insects, a nematode and a beneficial bug but I do believe that you need to use two things in order to have good effect on controlling pests but this is another example guys Gorgeously, if you would think that the stem or the node that's attached to this leaf would have no issue pushing out variegation. But look at the newest leaf, all green. A little frustrating because I do plan eventually to sell these uh, cuttings and I'm probably gonna have to like, I'm not gonna be able to sell half of them. At that point, I'll probably gift them to my friends and family. Most of these cuttings, I don't know if I mentioned, but um, they started off propagated in water. There are a few that I started just straight into this aeroid mix. My, you know, preferred method of propagating plants usually starts in water and then I'll just transition it to whatever medium I have or want to put it in. I know a lot of people, you know, have propagation boxes but like i hate 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 the whole acclimation process once they've grown like the moment they push out new growth it's cute it's lovely it pushes out growth fast but then when you take that little baby immature plant into for example my conditions which are totally you know not close to a high humidity high warmth, high heat, whatever, environment. Sometimes they shrivel up and die because they're in shock. I just don't like that. Okay, and then I usually just empty out the tray. Then I take my vinegar cleaning solution and I just spray it down. I don't know, a lot of people that I know hate vinegar. I love it. I have no issues with it. And I know, I know vinegar is like pretty old school, but like I'm kind of old school. <laughs> Okay, so another thing that I usually do every one to two weeks, I kind of look at some plants that are kind of, you know, 
their leaves look questionable and I almost think they have pests. Obviously, you know, with any collection, you really need to keep monitoring your plants for pests. We can be as strict as perfect in our, you know, our plant management and, and pest prevention. But unfortunately, these things just happen. Like, I don't want there to be any shame, you know, linked to it. I have a Hoya that I actually haven't shown you guys. Um, I'm going to put out a video about a bunch of Hoyas. This one's included. This is the Hoya Gunungading. She is, the luck is going to fall. She is so pretty. Oh. So she is sun stressed. You could see that it is really red here. The thing that I'm questioning is the newest leaf. If y'all can help me, is it called a broad mite? I don't know. Betsy Begonia put out a video about treating this specific mite that attacks Hoya. But, you know, I thought this damage was related. She did push out a new leaf that just kind of fell off. And that's usually a sign of, you know, the mites attacking the top part of either the new growth. So she is pushing out a new growth and a new leaf. So I guess I'll see what happens with that. I use this kind of microscope thing. I'll put a link in the description below, but this is very handy, guys. I would recommend getting this. I mean, I know these mites are generally small. I know they're very hard to catch, but I didn't see any, and I've been monitoring this leaf, and like, I've checked the other leaves too, and the stems and everything, and I haven't seen one. Um, the good news is she is pushing a new growth, so I mean, who knows? There is a chance that this is just the cells bursting just because the roots started growing into the reservoir. Usually when I have some Hoyas that are thicker leaved and the roots start growing into the reservoir and they're sitting there, then there's kind of like this rush of water uptake by the plant's roots into the plant. And if it is pushing out a new leaf, and obviously new leaves are very fragile, the cells burst. I think it's called edema, but I don't know if there's a, a better term for that. I was thinking it might have been that as well. Haven't seen any mites, haven't seen any other pests. If y'all know what this is, then please let me know. I'm just gonna isolate it for a little bit. Um, again, I have a video coming out where I do a three month update of uh, Hoya growth. In other Hoya news, this is my Hoya Crassiopetulata splash. Um, if y'all remember, I got her, she was in Sora for a while. I actually neglected her a little bit, to be honest. The tendril just got too long, so I cut it off. And then she has since pushed out these two gorgeous leaves, guys. There is a new tendril. And because she's getting a little long, I have these wire um, trellis things from Crystal Star Nursery. And what I, oops. If I know I'm gonna trellis a plant, but it's still small and doesn't need it at the moment, I put these cake dowels here. Um, I zip tie it to the net pot on both sides. So I'm just kind of forming it to the shape I want, I guess. Um, and obviously trying to, you know, have enough tension that it stands by itself. I'm just trying to put them in the holes. Oh my God. Ah! Oh my God. Chaos. Oh my God, there's soap all over. <laughs> Cute, look at this. And as mentioned before, you wanna be very careful with the new growth. Um, sometimes, see, I don't even know. I'm just gonna loosely just connect it like that, just so the rest of it, as it grows, I could just guide it around the trellis. But here she is. I just love, they're not even hardened off yet, but these new leaves right over here, look how gorgeous, oh my gosh. A few of you have asked for an update on my Hoya Grey Ghost. Um, here she is. So um, people do say that this is a slower Hoya to grow. She's pushed out a bunch of leaves and I I do neglect her, unfortunately. But I think it's time to put her on a trellis. I think I'm gonna have to use a bigger one than this one. So I'm just putting them through the dowels. I kinda wanna put two. just for extra support. I don't know, this is the science that's going through my brain. So here we are. Yeah, it does feel more secure. So, so I'm just taking these clips again and we're just going to, oh my, oh, 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 oh. Okay, I'm gonna leave this just hanging out that way. I don't wanna kind of disturb it 
because this this leaf hasn't hardened off yet so i just put the last one up here but yeah just guiding it up the trellis okay so i am going to repot my philodendron gloriosum so i mentioned this in a video uh recently but i only have two uh, Gloria with some propagations left. The other ones unfortunately didn't make it. As you can see, I was just using this pot to root them, but you could see that they're already <laughs> climbing out of the pot here. So I have this long pot. So I have my pre-washed LECA here, and we're just gonna, we're just gonna do it. Okay, it's coming out. Ooh. Look at that, guys. Especially the ones down here. Super healthy. Oop, I'm stepping on Lekka. I know this might be a mistake putting both in here, but I don't have room, guys. I'm just pulling them apart. And we're just gonna lay them. And actually, guys, there are some older roots that I'm gonna cut off. I'm just like assessing and feeling, but this is kind of rotted. So I'm just gonna cut what I can see. That is another reason why I talk about growing a healthy root system, either by guiding the adventitious roots into the LECA or whatever medium you, you're using, just because in this case, if I only had that root system and it rotted, then the plant would die. But because there are one, two, three, four, five, like five main root systems coming from the stem, it survives and it thrives. Put some Maleka over top here, and I'm just making sure to cover the newest adventitious roots. You can see that I kind of put the Leca to the top just to cover the stem and the roots. I find with um, crawling philodendrons, if I put the medium too high and they start to crawl, they kind of go too high and then I have to like push them down hoping that the LECA being lower it will root here and even if it doesn't I could just add more LECA underneath and therefore it's not like going up and it's easier to like keep contained to the pot okay so here she is beautiful if y'all didn't watch that video these were the mother leaves I want to keep them because they still have green and they haven't totally dried up so they are still huge solar panels for the plant to pull in sunlight, make more food for the plant. So yeah, I love this Gloriosum. I'm actually not sure what kind. Um, I've been told in the past that this looks like a dark form um, Gloriosum. The petioles are round, but yeah, here's the other leaf. I, even though I love this one, I do want, is it called the zebra or the silver? One of them. That is on my wish list currently. I just love all the like micro veining in the leaves. You know, even though it was sad that I kind of lost all the propagations, it's exciting to start from scratch and just to see how the plants will grow. I'm a little nervous about this growth point because every time there's a new growth and I transfer it, it might go into shock. Sometimes the new growth will rot away. I try to be as gentle as possible, so we will see. Okay, I took a little break um, just to eat and now so I'm going to show you two plants that you know they have been MIA from my channel for quite a while and it's because they're not doing great. I do kind of leave them. They're not necessarily dying. Well for example there's tons of yellowing in the leaf. There's not a lot of new growth coming so I think there's some root, root rot and I'm going to end up propagating these plants it is the Philodendron Plowmanii and the Philodendron McDowell. They were once in their glory at one point, but they look rough, y'all. So I need more space. They're trailing Philodendrons, and let me just show you. So actually, I moved the Plowmanii already. She lived right over here. The McDowell on this table is kind of like, you know, here's one of the leaves. She's pressed up against the window next to my elbow here. Two growth points, so there's one coming from the base. I air layered it and then stopped caring. And then the one that's crawling here, she's really just stopped. Like, what is that? It's, yeah, anyhow. I'm going to build another shelf 
like this one. I've actually had it for a year now, but I kind of want to grow my Plowmania and my McDowell. I mean, it's like prime real estate. If I put a shelf here, it gets a south facing view. And I mean, that's gonna be good for the summertime because there's more light in the summer. Propagations obviously need a lot of light. And so here's the Plowmania. She's on my rook. <laughs> Taking a closer look here, she has dropped all the leaves. I'm thinking the roots are suffering. You could see that I air layered circling around. <laughs> You'll see what I'm talking about. Like I said, it's not dying. It's just, look, I haven't looked at this plant in quite a while. Another project will be exciting, you know, just propagating this plant, watching it grow. So first I want to get rid of, I want to cut this part off just so it's easier to kind of work with the planter and what's already here. So you can see I've air layered it. It is really dry guys, um, but I'm going to basically cut here. Who knows if these roots are still good. Like I said, I ignored it. From there, I'll decide if I'm going to just do single node cuttings. There is a new set of aerial roots coming in, so that's good. And we're just gonna cut it right over here. Oh my God, everything just almost fell. Oh my, oh, oh no, okay. Three, two, one. Oh, it's so thick, oh. <laughs> so I'm just gonna take a closer look um, to see where the other aerials are and the other roots. Yeah, do you hear that? Crispy. So I'm just gonna cut this, maybe put this single node in moss or water. So they look really dry, but I'm gonna try. I'm preserving that node over there. And you can see that there are roots. However, guys, super dry. So a lot of the time when you rehydrate this, these roots, if they're too dry, they will just rot. A cut here. Okay, I'm probably going to do one more cut over here, and then I'm probably gonna leave one leaf with the rest of the plant. This is the end, and another single node. And so looking at the rest of the plant, you can see this is where I cut. I think I have to pour the leca into this bowl first. Ah, uh, yeah, these roots look rotten, guys. Oh my god. Oh, oh. Oh my gosh, there's, do you see, this is a brick. Oh my god, this is a brick. So, there are still healthy roots. It's not all dead, guys. Especially here, you can see new roots. I'm trying to be as gentle as possible. Obviously, can't be that gentle. I guess that's, oh, oh no. Oh my god. Okay, wait. This is so chaotic. I'm just cutting the end here. Let's do this one. So this one, the roots look fantastic and I didn't necessarily break a lot of them. Okay, next node. You know, all things considered guys, I, obviously because the plant got so big, like I had to kind of cut corners and I wasn't lifting this plant to my sink. So I was kind of just looking at the water level or the nutrient level and then just topping it up with water from uh, time to time. And I mean, I know it looks bad, but like feeling these roots, there's not a lot of rot. I think there was just rot at the bottom part where it was touching the reservoir. Ooh, this one is stuck. There we are, guys. Oh my gosh. Okay. Oh, wow. Y'all thought the last one had a good root system. Look at this one. I'm, I'm still going to propagate over here and keep this a single node. Let's do it. Three, two, one. And then let's see if we can. Let's leave over here. We got beautiful beautiful roots oh my god i thought this was gonna be worse so now i have this chunk i'm gonna see i'm just gonna keep cutting chunk number one i don't know if this is gonna do anything okay there are small roots with this chunk over here and we're just gonna keep going okay now i think i'm done so the last one here as these roots with this little tiny chalk. That was a lot, guys. Try to put this all in this bowl here, please, please, please. 
The way I like to clean my leka, and people might disagree, but I usually boil, oh my god, I usually boil my leka in a pot for about 15 to 20 minutes. So the ones that have roots, just because I have to do the McDowell, I'm just gonna put these in a bucket of water. Okay, next guys, yeah. This is the McDowell. You see what I'm talking about? I can't even let go of it. Oh my God, look at this. And because this one's gonna be harder to maneuver, can you grab your kitchen knife? Oh, oh my God, that scared me. So this is the end. <laughs> Number three. Oh, this is hard. Oh no, I didn't go all the way. Okay, three, two, one. <clears throat> yeah, I'm probably gonna speed this up, guys, because this is a lot. <laughs> okay, um, this one's worse. Oh my god, most of it is rot. Yeah, see, there's some healthy right over here. Future Kevin, zoom in. There's some here but you can see the majority here are brown um yeah so those have to go okay this one has no roots yeah do you see how i'm just pulling at all these roots here and they're just coming out in clumps okay guys i guess that's it i had a lot more planned uh for this video but it was getting a little bit too long and the whole uh plowmanii mcdowell situation my back was killing me after, so I spent the rest of the day actually just lying down. But yeah, please let me know if you if you want to see more of these kind of videos. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. If you've made it to the very end, thank you guys so much. I greatly appreciate it. And I'll see you guys later. Bye. <laughs>